y'all. Welcome back to another video in the series Throwback Thursdays. And this month I have a really cool treat for y'all. So go ahead and grab a big tub of popcorn or something yummy. And uh, cause this is a long one, not gonna lie, but worth it. Welcome to Kingdom of the Giants Dino Mega Park made in the Dragon Slayer community. And this collab took about three fourths of a year to make this whole entire project. And as you'll see, you'll understand why. But the map was created by the wonderful Red Dragon. All the terraforming was done by him. And he just did an amazing job as always. And as we go through the different rides and things, I will uh, tell you who did what. Case in point, these cute little uh, characters that you're looking at were made by Maslin, and I hope I'm pronouncing their name right. If I'm not, I apologize on this project. But I thought instead of just going into this collab and just going straight to what I did and talking about what I did, you know, even though it's like my channel and stuff, it just felt kind of wrong not to give a little shout out and nod and show what the other creators did as well and it's really fun uh, park. So I hope you enjoy the little uh, armchair vacation and join me as we explore this park. So as you will see, first off the bat, I am definitely not Mango when it comes to cinema cinematics. So <laughs> hopefully it's not too janky for you. Uh, and I think I've sped this up too, so it's, we're not here three hours. So here's some of the terraforming that Red did. It's really cool how he did the teeth and just really impressive. And what I like about what the creators did with these rides was uh, the sight lines and just seeing these iconic terraformed creatures from the ride's perspective is really cool. This collab was led by Dedex, who is a legend in our community and has made a lot of wonderful, diverse blueprints. If you haven't, if you haven't had a chance to check out his workshop, highly recommend checking out his workshop. Uh, he's, he makes really fun blueprint coasters. And so he was in charge of this collab, uh, kind of keeping us all in a timeline of, hey, how you doing? You know, we pass the park around the park file or we make things to put into the park and he keep tabs on us and all right, you know, so we can keep the, the park moving. So each area of this park has its own vibe, its own theme. It's still kind of tied in with these giant terraformed Jurassic creatures that are part of this this park that we've incorporated them into this park it's it's really unique i haven't seen anything else like this on the workshop speaking about the workshop this was uploaded to the steam workshop on august 2nd 2019 and i did this i was encouraged to participate in this after doing the blueprint shuffle that you guys have seen over the last few months and i'm really glad to have been part of this collab with a lot of fun creators. What I'm doing with the cinematics is trying to give a, a sense of the enormity, how the size of these terraformed dinos that you see. And they're really, they are big. And I, it's better to experience it in the park, but if for those that can't, I'm hoping I do a better, a, a decent job at this. First step on the POV rides is Wild 76 X Factor and then a few uh, shots from his uh, River Rapids. They both interact and I hope you enjoy.
The winged coaster we just rode was made by Matt Yorshin. And we're going to hop aboard the River Rapids that was made by Wild. I really liked the interaction of the coaster interacting with the river rapids and a lot of the temple triggered scenes with it. It was really fun. Now we have the dancing dragons made by Awesome Possum. And you'll recall Awesome Possum from the blueprint shuffles of uh, the Bear Necessities and the fantasy fairy tale food court that we just saw last month. made by Maslin, and this next coaster we're going to ride is also created by Maslin. Enjoy! is a cascade jungle ride made by our very own Dedex. Enjoy!
this playful area that you see with all these fun uh, basic shape characters are made by Andy P.U.K. In my Lonely Cowboy uh, Exploration Coaster ride, Andy had made Native American characters for me for that ride. And here's more of his wonderful creations. He just does, he on his workshop, he has so many cool different varieties. He's got superheroes, basically every genre you can think of for a character that you need, Andy has made it. And so I highly recommend you uh, going over to his workshop and uh, just make sure you give him credit if you use his stuff. But yeah, th this is just wonderful. One of the fun things about working in collaborations or just even uh, downloading things from the workshop of creators and creations that you respect and blow you away is checking them out and seeing how they've made the things that have you going, oh, that is really cool. I never thought about that. And it helps you grow as a creator as well. And I had a lot of fun as I worked on this to uh, inspect a lot of these things and rides and it just it, it was really it was a, a great learning experience for me and I love it when creators put their humor into their creations as well and as you can see there's a lot of humor in this area and it's it's really made me smile for me I like to go and explore the parks in creations that I see a lot of times there's more things that weren't featured or covered in a spotlight and I highly recommend doing that and finding all the little hidden gems that are otherwise missed I loved the theming of this flat ride. It was really well themed and well made. And in addition to making some really cool basic shape characters, Andy also makes some really dope basic shape animals. Yeah, Andy's basic shape characters are really impressive. If you're looking for something that is relatively as close to the in-game Archer animatronic, then Andy's basic shape characters are what you need for your creations. Uh, whereas mine are, are big and are kind of hard to fit into buildings and stuff like that. Uh, Andy's, he's able to uh, get it down really uh, small which is really impressive and hard to do. And this is a little shout out uh, to Dedex. Dedex has his own Discord server and his logo is the Sloth. Next up is the Dark Ride Meltdown made by Jimmy Mac.
we are riding the gondolas that M. Morgs has made, and they made the stations to this as well. And I really like this. This is a nice overview from the section that goes from the entrance, basically from the dueling dragons over the Flintstone Jurassic like bedrock area that Maslin has made. And then going into the modern Tokyo area that uh, Dedex had me work on. Below you will see the Flintstone area that Maslin has made. That really brought back childhood memories. It was one of my favorite cartoons and it really tickled me that they had made this in this park. I turn it to night because as I worked on this area, the modern area, as well as theming the roller coaster, I put a lot of effort into the the night lighting. I, I really focused on that and was really, really pleased with the lighting. It was, I think, one of my best lightings up to this point. And I took a lot of inspiration from photos and, but yeah, I really wanted to create a really cool ambiance. The decks had created the layout of the Jajinx coaster or the motorcycle coaster. And he let me just free will theme this whole entire area. He had made uh, the building with a connecting walkway up above. I'll point out the other buildings that he made when we get closer in that area. As if you wanted to see more from the gondola ride, <laughs> we're staying on here so we can get a better look going the opposite direction. To the right is the building that I was telling you that Dedex had made. And then you'll see the coaster station that Sail Blitz had made and themed. And he put the trees all around the queue leading up to the station. And I don't know if it was Dedex or someone else that put the giant uh, dinosaur turd down in the road. But yeah, I themed around that. <laughs> that was kind of funny. We get to see more of Maslin's Flintstone bedrock area. So my area that I themed was the area right before this. And I had roads. I did like a, a street and I tied this my street into the bedrock street. So try, I, I found a fun way to incorporate the two areas to kind of blend them in. But that was that was a challenge, but a, a good challenge. But we see some fun things in the bedrock, Wilma's wheel. So standing right now in the Flintstone area and walking towards the modern Tokyo area, that's what I had themed. The building you see is Studio 77. Awesome Pasa made that. So when I was asked to collaborate on this project, I went ahead and got a lot of inspirational pictures, but I also talked with the decks about what he had envisioned for this area, you know, a modern vibe with planters and fountains and modern art kind of things that you'd see as you're walking. So this is the inside of Awesome Possum's flat ride and they've done it like a, a studio set of a city, which is really cool. I was really impressed with this. And what you don't know is the motorcycle coaster goes behind this ride. It actually goes inside this building. You don't see it from here. And I had to be really careful as I themed it, not for it to kind of go in here. So that was really tricky, but also incorporating. So I took the street from, so in the Flintstones, it had a street and then in here it had a street. So that gave me the inspiration to do sidewalk for the, for the guests of the park to walk on and then the street as more of a decor, kind of just, it's fake, you know, but just to give you that feeling that you're in a city. So I carried all that theme. So that's one of the things that I like about collabs too, is they're challenging of trying to tie in the different areas and what you have to work with. You know, I can't just, you know, okay, I'm going to do a, a pirate area right here. You know, I mean, that wouldn't work, you know? And, and so, 
you know, why you want to keep your voice in a collab, you also want to not, you know, you want to tie everything together and stuff. And so that was a really good challenge and learning experience for me. Fun fact, the street names are actual names in Tokyo. They're named after some famous, the top 10 famous areas or provinces in the Tokyo area or areas that you should go see. And uh, so yeah, if you go inside the park and you look at the different names, yeah, that's all Easter egg. I had fun uh, doing the modern planters and like little sitting areas that you can like off of the like little enclosures to sit in. I really like that vibe, especially at night. Um, I went a little too crazy with the TMTK grass, but it's amazing. But I would highly recommend not using a, a lot of it, especially in a mega park. Uh, the challenge making the roundabout was def definitely a challenge, but I, I made it work. And then the signs, making it, uh, those are custom signs that I had done. I made buildings similar or to match the vibe of the Dexes, but then back here you'll see a cardboard cutout. They're like basically facades, building facades that are in-game pieces, and they worked really handy for piece count. The building we're looking at right now, the Dex made this building, and this cool building with the neon rainbow lights, he made this building as well. The rest of the city buildings you see are mine, as well as the bridges, the blue bridges that the uh, coaster interacts going around it, over it, and that you, they're actual walkways that you can walk on. I had fun making the signs on these city buildings. On this building, there's a bakery sign on here and then a ribbon. And that's just like a little shout out to, I had become friends with the decks in the World's Fair shop uh, contest in Channel 5. He was one of the first people that befriended me in the community. And so that was just my little secret nod to him. <laughs> that little smiley face in the window with the genie bottle, for those that know me, that's a total little hidden smiling Easter egg. And a little shout out to my street art, smile art. I used this font on the signs because it had that Asian character uh, that I had wanted to use without making a lot of custom Asian ones. But the ones that you do see, I did make those like that. I made that. It was hard making those yellow lines and the crosswalks, uh, but especially those yellow lines to make it look seamless. There's some janky parts if you look close. I also made the lamp posts and put them around. I had fun doing that. There was a lot of firsts in this collab for me. So theming this part of the coaster was a challenge because it actually went into the Studio 77 building that I was that I showed you 
before, uh, but you don't see it. It's behind the scenery, but trying to like how am I gonna theme this like you know it's in a building do we how do I just trying to figure out what to do so I thought well I'll, I'll do it a, a tunnel and I got in pictures of the tunnels different tunnels and that's what I I had used and so I, I have I actually found my reference pictures to show you stale blitz had themed the inside of the coaster station as well so this is what he did so now I'm taking you on the other direction of what I did. So now we're going in front of Studio 77 and on the other side of it. Uh, and you'll see Jimmy Max uh, Meltdown right on the left. That's such a great shot of that pterodactyl. So here I'm showing just how far I took the, the pathing where it ended, where my part ended and then where it went into the jungle area in front of Meltdown. And then on the other side is uh, Andy P.U.K.'s characters that we saw earlier. But now looking over here, the monor in on the other side of the monorail is what I made. Uh, the other side of what I made for the whole coaster. This is all for the coaster. So on my search of looking for inspiration for this project, I came across this really cool pagoda that's in the background of an older Tokyo neighborhood. And I so wanted to recreate this. And let me show you a picture. Here it is. And here is a screenshot that I took after completing this. And then here's more in game of the coaster with this pagoda after recreating the scene. And I am really, really proud of this. That really cool giant grasshopper that you see underneath the bridge that the coaster goes around. Red had made that and he did a great job with that. It's pretty dope, huh? And here is the old Tokyo neighborhood that's in front of the pagoda and there are some shops in here and there is an entrance that you can actually walk from this side and you go underneath uh, right there and on the other side is the pagoda and then you can go to the meltdown so there's different ways so uh, and I like that I like creating uh, for the guests in a park walkway so you don't have to go all the way back around <laughs> and here you get to see my ugly ass roofs in all of its gory detail <laughs> I curse these roofs so bad i was so embarrassed i think i tweaked them to where they're a little better because i reused i repurposed this neighborhood all these buildings i separated them and you'll see them in the dueling coaster contest they make up the city of ba Sing Se. Um, and i improved the roofs a little bit but not by much So this pagoda would not be possible without the amazing YouTube video series of Silverette. There's three videos in particular that I watched over and over again. It's his Fantasy Valley Part 5, Coasters and Pagodas, Fantasy Valley Part 6, Cliff Facades, and Fantasy Valley Part 7, Asian Gardening. And I followed along with all three of those episodes I'd stop and I'd follow along and do a little bit and then I'd play on and continue doing it. Um, I recreated his gong and some of his like the pond the Asian gardening but most helpful was this pagoda. So I built this pagoda but it was recreated from Silverette's pagoda. As with the old Tokyo neighborhood buildings I've repurposed this pagoda as well, and you'll find that in the in the last Avatar Dueling coasters that I had made. This I made it taller, and it's in the air. It's the Airbender Temple. I was really pleased how this uh, Japanese character sign came out. I had made that, and then you see the bridges. The bridges were a struggle, not so much on top, but like the slanting down and then having the fence posts and everything line up. And now we're walking through the queue of a coaster and Sail Blitz had done all this area, the 
the foliage and the queue, all the queue part and the coaster station itself, the outside as well as the inside. This was one of the pictures I used to uh, recreate signs in a city on the buildings that you see. So making these buildings around the coaster was a new challenge that I'd never done before. Instead of having like doors open and closed to triggers, I, I had the coasters going through the buildings and so I had them like ruined, like they were busting through the things. So it was hard to not have any clipping on the coasters so you know you're not it's not clipping through the building uh, that wouldn't have been good so that was a challenge I will be doing a day and night POV of this coaster but before I do that I wanted to take the time to thank y'all for tuning into this episode I really appreciate it I appreciate all the new subscribers and I appreciate uh, y'all's interest in my channel and the content that I produce. Thank you for your likes, your comments. It really, it really means a lot to me and it keeps me going. So thank you guys. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate y'all. The night vibe of this park is my favorite. I really love the ambiance and really pleased on how everything turned out. So here I pause the coaster so you can see what I would, had tried to recreate from that picture I showed you earlier of the pagoda behind the old Tokyo neighborhood. And both the pagoda and the city building are actual blueprints. I made them not in a Spark file, uh, but I made them in my laboratory. And then I put them into this, placed them into this map. And that was hard, And uh, but I wanted to get it just perfectly. So if you're having deja vu looking at this pond lit up, you're not mistaken. I have repurposed this pond and the lighting and the vibe in a couple of other creations that I've made since this. I reused it in the queue of the earth bender in the dueling coasters in that queue. And then I reused it again in my bedtime rituals. So those are two places where I've repurposed them. I really had a blast doing the lighting in this park from the signs and lighting them up, the pagoda, the modern planters, everything that I did that I had to highlight and, and light up. I just, I had a blast and I came away from it with all, with some strong favorites. My, one of the favorites is the netted glass orbs that you usually see in like pirate areas. It's, it's got that aquatic vibe to it but if you sink it underground or put them in planters it gives a really cool glow to the greenery to the foliage I don't know how I hope I said that right anyhow but I loved that and then in the round circle planters I used uh, different lights the some of the in-game lights I put in there that had like a, a warm red or peachish glow. I sunk those in there. The mushroom lights to give a soft glow. So I used quite a bit of those. I used in the trees. I used the haunted house uh, round orb and I put that in there to give a little bit of uh, illumination in there. Here I show how I used the netted glass balls or lights to illuminate the smaller little uh, conifer bushes that you see in the planters. I really love this trick. But yeah, these are some of my little tricks. Oh my gosh, and as I record this, I am cringing, seriously cringing at my movements. Oh my gosh, I've had, I suck at Tejid Camp, but I'm gonna really work on trying to improve my cinematics because this is just so cringy. Oh. If you have any questions from today's video, please feel free to write them in the comments and I will respond back to you. Thanks again for joining me on this journey back in time to the Kingdom of the Giants collab. It was really fun to revisit this 
park and to show y'all the pagoda that I was really proud of and for the most part other than those ugly roofs <laughs> the village and the decor that went along with this I really appreciate the Dex giving me the chance to do this and the Dragon Slayer uh, Discord community for their support and encouragement in this project and now enjoy the daytime and nighttime POV of the coaster peace love and blessed be y'all <laughs> <laughs>